look at in chapter 2. Uh, so they think of what happens. Beginning of chapter 1, Habakkuk surveys the scene in the land. And at this point he's merely a social commentator. And he looks out on the land and he sees the godlessness and he sees the uh, mindlessness of God. You know, in the situation, we're not mindful of God. And uh, <clears throat> he just cries out to God about that. He makes a complaint to God about it. As if, as if he thinks God's doing nothing. And that's often the position we're in, isn't it? You know, we think God is doing nothing about something. And that can go on for a long time. And Habakkuk has been in this situation for a long time. It looks like he's been praying about what he sees in the land for ages. And he should have been, and that's right. And then God comes right back at him and says, <laughs> you don't know half of it. He doesn't, but it's similar. And he says, the analysis of the situation basically is not sufficient. It is awful bad. And I'm going to bring the Babylonians and wipe out the monarchy. In Israel. Gosh, it'll be gone. Israel, the northern kingdom's gone already. Judah, you know better, you're going now. I'm bringing the Babylonians, you'll be gone. And now, of course, Habakkuk goes, whoa, you can't do that. This is the way we do. And uh, he pours out his second complaint. And we're coming to the end of that second complaint. We looked at it last time. And we're coming into Habakkuk actually learning to shut up and listen. Important place to get to, isn't it? Now, Habakkuk is a really, really well crafted piece of writing, and I haven't begun to scratch the surface myself. It's, it's a tremendous bit of work. And this chapter opens, verse 1, with a silence. So the chapter opens with a silence, and then at the end, verse 20, you get a silence. At both ends, there is this mention of stopping and being silent and Having poured out your heart to God, which is right, then shutting up in the first place, and then at the end, having been brought into back into proper submission to God, His people being silent in all the earth. So it's like uh, brackets, like uh, bookends, that, that sort of bracket that section. There's your section. You know, it's a good piece of writing. Um, the conclusion refers to the introduction. Good sermons are like that. Don't bang on it. Um, but, but that's the way it goes, isn't it? You start off with something, but then the conclusion refers to a tiny bit of writing. And it's a bracket to this oracle. Habakkuk has been banging on a bit, frankly, in the previous chapter. And he comes to a shuddering halt then here in verse 1 of chapter 2. Like somebody waxing eloquent and really having their say about something, getting it off their chest, and then saying, right, I'll shut up now, I've said enough. And that's what Habakkuk's doing. He realises he's said enough now. He realises that, and he explicitly marks the point at which he shuts himself up, and brings his tirade of complaint against God to a shuddering conclusion, he realises that all he's been doing is all the talking. And he really needs to shut up and listen to God, and there comes a time. It's a really important point there, isn't it? We need to understand. There is a strong biblical tradition of the faithful bringing their laments and their complaints to their Heavenly Father, we saw that last time. That's right. But there's also a strong biblical tradition of godly people who, who do wish to live submissively in, in a proper covenant relationship with a sovereign God, then realising they've done that. that they, they've done their lament, they've done their complaint, and they now need to shut up and listen if they're ever going to hear anything about this from God. It is important. To faithfully, perhaps frustratedly, but not unfaithfully, pour out your breaking heart to your Father in heaven. Wrong not to. Very often. There are clearly times when only He can help you. But it is only the rebellious heart that simply keeps banging on. The faithful heart does that, then sits back and gives room for God's answer to be heard. And that's what Habakkuk needs to do. And, and that's what Habakkuk realises that he needs to do. And that's what the whole earth needs to do. Because that's, it's not just Judah, you see, at the end, verse 20. It's the whole earth that needs to be silent before it's created and gone. And it says, it says, the land, the earth. The whole land. They need to sit back. It's a by virtue of creation thing. Not by virtue of faithfulness or covenant thing. It's by virtue of being the created earth that God has created. 
It's a creation ordinance. To sit back and be silent before God and in awe of your Creator. He's in His holy temple. Let all the earth be silent.